Hello mixed media artists and art journalists. It's Michelle here from mixedmediaart.net and I'm excited to share this mixed media art tip with you today. Now a mixed media tip request has come from Mel and she wanted us to look at mixed media collage with metallic acrylic stenciled overlays. So we're going to have a little look at that today. So let's jump into it. Okay, so what I have prepared is a mixed media collage, as Mel asked. So I've got a bit of a background here. This is in my Dina Wakely Mix Mix Mixed Media Journal. And I've got some paint down and I've got some hexagons that I've cut from gel prints and put a little bit of um, water-soluble black around it to give it a bit of a some depth. We've also got some metallic acrylic paints. So these are the ones we stock, the Dina Wakely ones. Now her original range in the gilt, the sterling and the penny we have. So that's a gold, it's a nice gold colour. Ster sterling is a light silver and penny is this really lovely copper colour. And then her three new metallic acrylics are the ancient, which is a slightly darker gold. You can see there, it's just that little bit darker. You can see rosy, which is a really gorgeous um, sort of a rose goldy silver, pinky silver. And then we've got medieval, which is a slightly darker silver as well. So I'm going to use the penny on this because I don't want the gold to be too bright. And I find that copper is a really good color. If you want to add some metallic, but you don't want it to be too overwhelming. So the other thing I've got is a stencil. This is a darkroom door stencil. And I've got a makeup sponge, which is one of the key things for stenciling. So the first thing I'm going to suggest, now whether you've got Dina Wakely paints or not, is to make sure that you know your paint. So the first thing that we're going to do before we go and slather paint all over here is make sure that we know them. So in our book where I put all my techniques, I've got a little bit of ephemera. I have got my stencil and I've already got some of that beautiful penny paint out of my palette. So what I'm going to do, now the key with stenciling is that we've got to go slow and steady. Now for many of us mixed media artists, that can be a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to take the sponge, this is completely dry, I'm going to dab it and then dab off. Remember what Cheryl Boglioli told us, dab on, dab off. So we only just want the tiniest bit of paint on our sponge, then holding our stencil firmly and then just tapping. And just really, really slowly building up that layer because what we don't want, if we've got too much paint, it's going to bleed under the stencil and it's going to be a bit messy. Now, of course, it's mixed media, so there are no rules. There's only guidelines. But if we want a nice, clear stencil outline, we know we need to, and see how that, it just keeps going. So we get quite a bit of paint out of that. Okay. Now, of course, it's stencils. If you have trouble holding it, you're welcome to tape it down. But what we can always do is just check that looks about right lifting it straight off and of course we want to come back and wipe that as well though you can see that that one hasn't been wiped too well and now when we look at it on our trial we can see that while this penny yes we can see that it's metallic it's catching the light it is still slightly transparent so we're considering here how opaque or how transparent our paints are so that tells me that when I do it on here you still will be able to see the pattern behind but as we can see where I started here, that's quite solid, but you can still see the text underneath it. And then over here where we're getting a bit lighter, it's a lot easier. So we might, you know, for this layout, look at getting more of this level of coverage rather than that. So, okay. So if anyone's got any questions, just pop them in the comments and we'll get back to them. But like we always talk about, get to know your paint. So have a book where you do all your swatches, you stick it over some ephemera, and that allows you to know how solid or how translucent your paints will be. Because in art journaling, we want our translucent paints over the top if we're looking for colour, and then our more opaque paints through our stencils because we want them to sit up on top. Okay, so now we've done a little bit of experimenting. Now this one I've used hexagons, so I'm going to stick with the hexagon theme. Now for metallic overlay, I don't want to put a whole heap on here. Metallics, firstly, they're very hard to pick up through video, but also they tend to be the bits that in real life just sort of grab our attention, but we don't want too much of it. We don't want to make it too blingy. So our challenge is just how to get a little bit. So we can see I've sort of got some hexagons through here. I've got some torn edges here. So I'm thinking of putting a little bit of stenciling through here 
and having it sort of lead off and then just a little bit here. So not too much at all. I'll make sure my stencil's clean on the bottom, popping it in place. And the other thing I want to consider is that if I don't want sharp lines, then I can not go all the way to the edge. So again, gold paint on palette. And this is just an old little meat tray. Dabbing on, dabbing off. You can almost have not too little a paint on your sponge when you get started holding that down firmly. And then like we said, just light pounces. Because with art journaling, sometimes we don't need it to be really defined. What we're looking for is just a bit of a hint, just something else that our eyes can pick up to give it a little bit of interest, to add that visual interest. Adding a little bit more. And like I said, I don't want that top one to be too solid, so I'm not going to go right over it. I'm just going to leave the edges a little bit random. Coming back and just making sure that I've at least pressed hard enough to get that impression and not have too much space. Can you see that okay? The light's a bit always challenging. Okay, and I don't want that looking too solid. Okay. So whether we just want a little bit more here and play with it as we go, or sometimes just one solid one might give it an interesting effect as well. So we pull that up and there we go. So now we can see we're keeping with a hexagon theme. Still looking at it, you see that hexagon pattern most solidly, but that just adds that little metallic glow to it as well. Okay, so if we add some more, we want to leave that to dry, so we don't want to touch that. Just leave it there, popping this one down here. And then off we go. Again, exactly the same process. Dab on, dab off, adding a little bit, a little bit of overlap. But knowing that because this is see-through, we'll still be able to see what's going on underneath. Now the challenge here is that I don't want to leave this side looking too sort of solid and abrupt. So I want to be able to feather that a little bit. And again, it's completely personal preference. No rules in art journaling, only guidelines. So if you want to use that solid, you're more than welcome to. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a fade. Try and get rid of some of those lines. And maybe just a tiny bit in there. Okay. Now originally I was just thinking of those two spots, but as we know with art journaling, odd numbers and rules of one, three or five is always good. So we probably just need to add a little bit somewhere just to complete that. So where would we put it? May I don't really want to put too much here because I don't want to cover that. So maybe just a little bit up here. And what we might do just to sort of break up the randomness is turn this stencil around a little bit and use a different section. Sometimes it can be really hard to be random in our art journaling. So again, dabbing that paint on, dabbing it off. And just looking at using just a few of those hexagons. Now the challenge, of course, is that we've got the page folding over here. So we want to make sure I'm pressing just hard enough for that stencil to come down in the same place each time. That is one of the challenges of art journaling is you've got those pages. Holding it nice and firmly. Maybe just a little bit more there. A little bit there. And again, sort of having it faded down. There we go. So we've got our beautiful page with our coloured backgrounds. We've got our gel print hexagons. Let's use some water-soluble crayon around it to give it a bit of shadow. And now I've added these little bits of metallic overlay with stencils, knowing through our trial that this is not quite fully opaque, it's somewhere in the middle, so that we know we will be able to see what's in behind it. So there you go. If you're looking for metallic paints, like I said, we've got the gilt, sterling and the penny, and then along with the rosy, the ancient and the medieval paints in the Dina Wakeling.
So Mel and everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this mixed media tip request. So we were looking at how to add that layer of metallic to a stencil onto a collage. So of course the key with anything in art journaling, and I guess art in general, is to really know your materials. So do some practice runs, do some trials, do some swatches, rather than diving in really deeply and then suddenly realizing maybe that paint was too transparent, it's not gonna show off as much as you want, or maybe it's too opaque and it's really blocking what's in behind it. Because with art journaling, as we create those layers, some we want more see through than others. So we just have to consider there's no right or wrong, but there's some guidelines and knowing our materials is really the best way to give us the results that we're happy with. So this is Michelle signing off. Happy crafting.